guys. Long time no see, but you already know who it is. Santonio Holmes here, and thank you, thank you so much for 1,000 plus subscribers. You guys are the real MVPs. You guys are the reason I do this. I mean, every time I get a comment saying that, you know, you, you made my day, you made me laugh, or uh, I learned something new, like, that's, that, that's the reason I want to make better quality video for you guys. But alright, anyways, today we're going to be learning my favorite part of Street Fighter 4, Super Combos and Ultra Combos. Super Combos were first introduced into the Super Street Fighter Turbo 2 series, and since then, Super Moves, Super Arts, or Super Type Moves have been the standard for every fighting game since. Today, you're not going to see any uh, fighting games that are made that don't include some type of Super Type Meter or Move. Supers and Ultras are unique moves that can only be performed after you fulfill certain requirements. They are called Super Combos or Ultra Combos because you perf usually perform a string of attacks that lead to devastating amounts of damage. And Supers and Ultras also give your characters certain unique properties such as projectile invincibility or juggle potential. Now, Super and Ultras are what create the hype for me because you can turn a match around just by strategically landing one Super Combo or an Ultra Combo. And we got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Alright guys, so basically, Supers require uh, a full bar of Super Meter in order to execute. Meaning that at the bottom of your screen, you have your Super Meter, those four little bars at the bottom. And when, it fill, when all four bars fill up all the way, it means that your Super is ready for you to cast at your discretion. Now, Supers compared to Ultras have way faster startup and way faster recovery than their Ultra Big Brothers. But the downside is, is that they don't do as much damage as Ultras, but trust me, it still does a very, very good amount of damage and there are several types of supers, but some are more beneficial than others. So let's take a look at some examples. So, uh, of course, we gotta take a look at Ryu, right? Uh, he's the most basic character. Uh, his super is the Shinku Hadouken. Um, very, very awesome super, very useful. Um, and much like his fireballs, uh, you can control his the speed of his super, depending on which button you press. So, uh, the uh, light one, is much slower and the heavy one will pretty much go full screen instantaneously. Again, like I said before, you can pretty much uh, cancel a super from any of your normal cancelables and your specials. Okay, so for example, so if you can cancel a normal into it, you can cancel it into a super. So Ryu's super is basically uh, a pretty much a combo ender in a way. Uh, it has no applications outside of that. Uh, so if you want to get some extra big damage on your opponent, um, then you could deal really, really good damage. I think. Let me see. Yeah, look at that. That's 430 damage. Like half your opponent's health uh, with one with one combo. So uh, it could be pretty devastating uh, once you get your super. Uh, but again, uh, Ryu Super is mainly used as a as a combo ender there because even though it is incredibly incredibly fast super, uh, if you throw it from full screen, someone can just jump over it. And uh, again, bringing up the fast thing again, uh, Ryu's Super is two frames. Okay, so so you can execute this move in two frames. And if you don't know what frames are, it's fine. Uh, basically, to give you some perspective. Uh, how fast uh, his super is of the average jab is about three frames okay so that's uh, it's faster than a jab okay so that that's how fast uh, Ryu's super is most supers that you encounter in the game are mostly uh, offensive supers meaning that they're combo enders or used to get big damage or big punishes well again it's not all supers okay just most supers just like Ken's here <laughs> is an offensive super that does a very very good chunk of damage even more than Ryu's uh, Shinbu Hadouken. So Zangief here has a grab type move that requires you to be very close to the opponent or close to your opponent I guess not super close uh, like here <laughs> I'm 
sorry, I really love uh, Zangief's Super and Ultra. And Akuma's Raging Demon Super is also a grab time move. So an example of uh, non-offensive supers uh, is the twins here, also including Makoto. Uh, the twins have very very special uh, supers carried over from the Third Strike series, and Yoon, who I'm going to show you first, has the Ganajin, which basically turns his uh, super meter into a timer. And what the super does is gives you his special properties. It basically uh, gives you no recovery on any of your moves okay so basically you can activate the super and then you will have no recovery on your moves allowing you to keep on juggling your opponent because you no longer have to recover from any of your special moves and i think uh it is a very very powerful tool for yoon because it really really instu instills that fear into your opponent so, uh, Yang, the younger brother of Yoon, uh, also has a timer-based super, but they are very, but they're very, very different. Uh, his Starlight Waltz basically creates uh, three mirror images of himself that will attack uh, along with your attacks. So basically, you can use this to pressure opponents because you know there's so many of them that they pretty much don't know what to freaking do. You can also, uh, also like his super allows you to do things that you weren't able to do uh, while he's not in his super mode state. So basically, it can become a very very powerful tool into uh, doing some really 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 good damage. So Makoto's super is also a timer based uh, super, but it's very very unique because uh, it doesn't look like much at first, but basically what it is is a damage multiplier. So any of her special moves or normal moves will be multiplied by uh, 25%. Yeah, yeah, I think it's 25%. So basically it's 25% uh, more than the damage that you would normally get. So let's see, her uh, rush punch here does 125 damage. Uh, with no super, so let's check with the super here. It does 157, okay? And it doesn't seem like much, just a little little bit of a damage boost, but trust me, uh, every little, um, every little bit of damage in Street Fighter counts for a lot. Uh, again, I personally think that Makoto is more, much more suited using her meter, uh, but that's, uh, for you... The player to decide so to wrap things up basically you should use your supers very very wisely and strategically because they cost all four bars of meter but if you do land one it will do a healthy amount of damage to your opponent and not to mention the staggering amount of mental damage it does to your opponent okay but you have to decide whether you want to spend the meter for the super or not sometimes it's beneficial for you to gain a large life lead whether at the end or at the beginning of the round and sometimes the scenario requires you to save your meter for an invincible reversal or to gain a larger advantage later in the game and a very important note that you should know is that your super meter from the first round will carry into the next round uh, whether you win or not. So uh, meter saving and meter building is incredibly important in Street Fighter. Now let's move on to Ultras. The Ultra Revenge meter was first introduced into the Street Fighter 4 series, and having this Ultra meter along with your super meter is probably the best mechanic introduced into the Street Fighter series as a whole. It makes the game into a real fantasy Dragon Ball Z slugfest, allowing players to completely turn around a game if they have the technical discipline. I compare it to basically having pocket sand. Uh, you use it when your opponent least expects it, and if you do land it, uh, you can turn around the match completely. The revenge meter can only be filled by taking damage, hence the name. And yes, you can take damage through the focus attack mechanic and it counts as taking damage. So you can quote unquote realistically take no damage but still gain an ultra. Your ultra becomes available when it's half filled. But the damage that you deal is about 60% of the damage compared 
to a full meter of ultra. And if it was three fourths filled, you do about 75, 80% damage. And if it's 90, well, you know, you get the picture, okay? Now, ultras are really, really, really diverse. They all have their major ups and downs. The damage and special properties a character gains through their ultra can turn a bad matchup into a great matchup. And with the introduction of the two different types of ultras in Super Street Fighter 4, and then the implementation of Ultra Combo Double in Ultra Street Fighter 4, it turns Street Fighter into one of the most complex and difficult fighting games there is. It's basically like playing poker, except you have an ace in your shoe and a gun pointed at them under the table. Alright, so we got lots of different types of ultras to cover, so let's get started. Now, don't get offended if I don't showcase your character, okay? As you can see, there is lots and lots of characters, for, and they have two ultra combos for each character, so I can't showcase every single character. Uh, in order to save a little time, I'm just going to be demonstrating the uh, some of the important types of ultras and their applications and their unique properties. Uh, so when you go to your uh, ultra combo select menu here, you see that there are three options that you can choose. There's ultra 1, ultra 2, and ultra combo double. And if you're wondering about ultra combo double, um, I'd rather leave that for a separate video because it was a new mechanic introduced into the Ultra Street Fighter 4 series, and it's actually pretty complicated, so I'd rather leave that for a separate video. Now, to me, there are two types of ultras, okay? There are offensive ultras and defensive ultras. Of course, it's more complicated than that, but uh, if you think about it, you can narrow it down to those two categories, all right? So, um, just for an example, okay? I'm just gonna throw out an example. So, if I'm gonna play Ken, right? Uh, for normal characters, I'm just going to choose Ultra 1, okay? Ultra 1 was uh, the first ultra introduced in the original Street Fighter 4. Uh, it's still very very useful. It, it is an offensive ultra, okay? But if I was gonna play against a fireball character, a, char a character that throws fireballs, I'm gonna choose Ultra 2, okay? Because Ultra 2 is a fireball punish, okay? Um, so that will give me an edge in the fireball war uh, if we just start chucking fireballs at each other. A lot of other characters also have that as well. So Dudley Ultra 1, fireball punish, Ultra 2, offensive ultra combo. Same thing for Chung Li here. You got your offensive ultra, and then you got your fireball punish ultra. Okay. Um, and this mechanic here, being able to choose um, an ultra at the select screen when you're playing with your opponent, uh, can was to me a genius move by Capcom uh, because it adds a whole new layer to the game. You know, like just it can. It, <laughs> It basically turns a good matchup into a bad matchup, like I said. But, you know, that's just, you know, cannon fodder. That's yada yada, okay? We're just gonna start with something very simple. Um, let's just go with Reuse Ultra 1, okay? So, two very, very important things before we get started, okay? Number one, Ultras do a boatload of damage, okay? They do a shitload of damage, okay? And the more damage that you take, the more filled your revenge meter is, the more damage you will do with your Ultra. Okay, and I think this is a great mechanic introduced into the Street Fighter series, and I'm really glad that Capcom did it. Okay, number two, okay, is that you cannot cancel into Ultras, okay? And if you don't know what a cancel is, please refer to episode three on special canceling moves, okay? Um, basically, uh, so you can do, you know, low forward in the fireball, cancel, it's fine. You can even do, you know, a crouching heavy punch in the you can, you can cancel. All that stuff. You can even cancel into super if you really wanted to, but you cannot do it with an ultra, unfortunately. Okay, and the reason for this is because ultras do a lot of damage. They're really, really powerful, and they shouldn't be easy to land. Okay, ultras are not easy to land. You cannot just throw them out recklessly. Okay. Um. So, but what I mean by combo into, you know, I mean like, I mean like, you know, F A D C combos, things like that. Uh, Corner juggles, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, jumping punishes, things like that. But these are all really, really complicated terms that, you know, that we don't need to cover right now, okay? We just need to know, uh, ultras and what they are. So, let's examine Ultra 1, okay? Ultra 1 for Ryu is a projectile, okay? There's a healthy amount of damage, okay? Knocks your opponent down with a hard knockdown. It's great, okay? 
But other than that, it's pretty simple. It's your basic offensive ultra. Okay? If you land it, great, you get a boatload of damage. Uh, so, for a different example, let's examine Ryu's Ultra 2. So Ryu's Ultra 2 here uh, is also, to me, an offensive ultra, okay? But it has defensive applications, alright? So let me just show you. Sorry. So instead of a projectile, it's actually a hit-type move, okay? Meaning that it does not travel across the screen like a projectile, okay? Um, and what's great about... Uh, his Ultra 2, again, different applications, it could be used as an anti-air, okay? So if your opponent jumps at you, you can activate the Ultra and catch them while they're jumping at you and land your Ultra, okay? So if he just jumps at me recklessly, I just have him jumping a neutral jump, but uh, if he jumps at me, I can go ahead and activate my Ultra 2, boom, he just landed right in my Ultra. But again, like, these Ultras, you know, they're hard to land, okay, because they do a lot of damage. So, you have to, you know, react very quickly, combo into them, things like that. So, for the second example, I'm going to use Ryu's sparring partner, Ken, okay? Uh, his Ultra 1 is very, very similar to Ryu's Ultra 2. Uh, it is a hit type of Ultra. And just like Ryu's Ultra 2, you can use it as an anti-air, okay? And again... Very, very hard to land, okay? You can't just, you know, throw it out there. You can't just, like, do it from a jab, you know? Like, you can see, he can block it. So, uh, let's examine Ken's Ultra 2, which is vastly different from his Ultra 1. So now, I've selected Ken's Ultra 2, okay? Which is a fireball punish, okay? Um, so, if Ryu's just chucking fireballs at me, okay? I'm like, ah oh, man, like, I don't... I can't do... I can't do anything, man. He's just chucking fireballs at me. Like, what the heck? Stop it, man. But, um, if I have Ultra 2, okay, I can really turn the game around. If I'm playing this little fireball war with him, I just activate Ultra 2. When he throws a fireball at me, it'll go straight through the fireball, okay? It'll go straight through the fireball because it has fireball invincibility. That is the special property given to Ken's Ultra 2, okay? Hence why it's called a fireball punish. So... Whenever someone checks a fireball at me, I can just activate Ultra 2, go right through the fireball, and hit him with my Ultra, okay? Now, to me, this is a defensive type Ultra because you have to react to something. You have to do... Your opponent has to do something in order for you to activate your Ultra. Let me show you some other examples of Punish Ultras. So, I just got Dudley here. Um... And you can see I have Ryu chucking fireballs again. And if you play Dudley, you know how hard it is to get in on a fireball character, okay? Because you don't have, uh, well, you do have an option, but uh, you don't have a lot of options to get in on your opponent. Because if they're just zoning out with fireballs all day, uh, you're not being able to do any damage with Dudley because... Dudley does his damage up close. So, I have chosen Ultra 1 for Dudley in order to punish uh, Ryu when he throws a fireball at me in order to completely eliminate uh, a fireball game for fireball characters. So I'm like, Ryu, stop, man. Why are you like, stop throwing fireballs at me, man? I can't get in on you. Oh, man, what's going on? But then if he throws a fireball at me recklessly, I can go ahead and uh, activate Ultra 2 here. I'm sorry, Ultra 1. And it goes right under the fireball, okay? And boom, I just did 500 damage because he recklessly threw a fireball at me. So another character I got here is Chun-Li. Uh, her Ultra 1 is also a fireball punish uh, because it has full projectile invincibility, okay? Um, her Ultra Combo 1 does a lot of damage, okay? So to me, she has the best fireball punish out of any of the... Uh, the fireball punish ultras okay so i got ryu just throwing fireballs at me oh my god man like stop throwing fireballs at me maybe if you go ahead and throw a fireball at me again come on, come on. boom goes right through the fireball and i can actually do it pretty late too i can do it really late because it goes full screen super fast. All right, it's really, really awesome. Uh, if you're playing against a fireball character, there is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be using Ultra. 
So, when you're playing against a character that doesn't throw any fireballs, such as Fei Long here, uh, your opportunities to land Ultra 1 with Chung Li are greatly diminished. Okay, so instead, I'm going to use Ultra 2, which is an offensive Ultra for Chung Li, uh, allowing me for more opportunities to land that Ultra combo damage. Okay, so I just got Fei Long doing some rush punches at me here. So, for example, if he just throws a rush punch at me, I can punish him with the Ultra 2, okay? And what's great about uh, Chun-Li's Ultra 2 is that you can combo into it very, very easily. So I'm gonna combo into it from EX Lightning Legs, okay? And boom, that is very, very easy Ultra Combo damage, okay? Excellent, excellent combo, uh, Ultra Combo. Uh, and again, this is a... Uh, this is an offensive ultra, so instead of waiting for your opponent to throw a fireball at you and react with ultra 1, you can use ultra 2 offensively at your game, at your discretion. So the next character I'm going to show you is uh, Rose here. Um, Rose has, you know, her standard, you know, ultra 2, I mean ultra 1, which is a uh, punish ultra, is an offensive ultra, you use it to punish opponents that jump in at you, that miss moves, things like that. Um, and then she has her Ultra 2, okay? Her Ultra 2 is just just about as defensive as it gets, okay? What you get is a two little uh, orbs that surround Rose uh, while she's moving around and while she's doing moves. So you can use this opponent, I mean you can use this against your opponent uh, when they're getting too close to you, they're rushing you down, they're pressuring you a lot. This is a get off me ultra, okay? That means that if you get too close to me, you're gonna get hit by one of these orbs, okay? And the great thing about uh, this ultra is that you can do uh, anything while you're, uh, uh, you can do anything while your ultra is activated. So you can, you can use focuses, you can do special moves. Uh, you can jump around, you can completely back off and just throw fireballs at your opponent or you can get up really close and uh, and get in their face. Uh, so that's a really good example of a defensive ultra. So I just have T-Hawk here and as you know T-Hawk is a, a grappler type character meaning that he gets in your face and wrestles and throws you around. Okay. Uh, his two ultras are very, very different and they have different applications and purposes, okay? His first uh, ultra, ultra, his ultra one, is a grab type, grab type ultra, which means that you have to be close to your opponent in order to use it, okay? You cannot be full screen, you cannot be full screen and uh, throw it out, nothing will happen, it's not a projectile, okay? But when you land it, it does a boatload of damage, okay? Uh, so. Moving on to his Ultra 2, his Ultra 2 is an anti-air Ultra, okay? That means that it can only hit opponents that are airborne, okay? Or considered airborne by the game's engine, alright? So I'm just gonna set the dummy to jump, alright? That's his Ultra 2, boom. And if your opponent is jumping, he's gonna get hit by it. So you can use this to punish, you can use Ultra 2 to punish opponents that recklessly jump at you or jump around you or just like to jump in general, okay? Because God knows scrubs like to jump. So I got Zangief here, um, which is a grappler type character just like T-Hawk, uh, and his uh, ultras, his two ultras are also very different as well. So you have his Ultra 1, which is a grab type ultra, you have to be close to your opponent, okay? But if you do land it, does a great amount of damage, okay? And uh, his Ultra 2 is also an anti-air, okay? But instead of an anti-air hit, is more like an anti-air grab, okay? As I will demonstrate now. So, if my opponent is jumping or jumping at me, I can go ahead and uh, activate Ultra 2 here. If I can just do it. If I can just do it. Okay, there we go. Boom. This is a dope. This is the dopest ultra, by the way. In terms of like comedic value, <laughs> it is the dopest ultra in terms of in terms of uh, comedic relief. So the next character I'm going to show you here is a uh, Dalsim. Uh, Dalsim's ultra one is a defensive type ultra, okay. But 
uh, not in the reactive sense, okay? It's not like an anti-air or like, uh, you know, a fireball punish, anything like that. It's actually used preemptively. Um, so, uh, when you activate Ultra, Ultra One here, uh, Dalton sends out a little slow moving fireball towards your opponent, and if you're cornered here, you know, you're being pressured by your opponent, you can go ahead and activate Ultra One, uh, forcing them to get off you or back away, giving you some breathing room for a next setup or, uh, you know, increase your defense a little bit. Uh, but also, you can also use Dalsum's Ultra 1 for uh, setups as well. So when you activate it, you can teleport behind your opponent, hit him, things like that. Uh, but it's mainly used as a defensive Ultra, a get off me, much like Rose's Ultra 2. Okay, uh, that's why it is the choice Ultra for most Dalsum players. So the uh, very beautiful and sexy Jerry here... Um, has one of the more unique ultras in the game, okay? So when you activate Ultra 1, it turns her ultra meter into a timer, and basically what it does is it gives her some special properties, allowing her to turn into like a combo beast. Um, but it's not like the normal offensive combos where you activate it and it does something. Uh, after you activate it, you actually have to go in and, uh, and do stuff. You have to do combos. But what her combo does is it gives her really, really unique properties, um, allowing you to uh, link some combos or do some combos that were not possible in her non-ultra state. Okay, um, and her ultra two is her offensive combo. So just do it. Uh, people usually use ultra two if they don't quite understand uh, how Ultra 1 works yet uh, because uh, learning uh, the application of Ultra 1 is actually quite difficult I might do a tutorial on that in the future um, but uh, learning Ultra 1 is extremely important because uh, Ultra 1 is what defines Jerry as a character so Elena here also has a uh, pretty unique Ultra uh, her Ultra 1 uh, is her standard, you know, offensive Ultra, uh, you know, use it to combo into punish opponents, things like that. But what's unique about her is that she has a healing Ultra. So you can go ahead and uh, activate that during the battle if you want to heal yourself during any time. And also, you know, the, uh, the more full your Ultra Meter is, the more healing it will do. Um, so uh, that can uh, gain you a significant advantage in a game if you're able to heal yourself halfway through that's that's pretty awesome uh, but you know again you can choose whether you want to you know do that big damage or uh, you want to go with the healing route uh, to uh, play a more defensive game so Fei Long here is another character I want to show you because he also has a pretty unique ultra um, you know his ultra one is basically you know your standard uh, Standard offensive ultra. Uh, it does a whole lot of damage as well as a lot of mental damage. Um, but his ultra two is what's unique. Um, so his ultra two is actually a counter ultra. And if you don't know what a counter ultra is, it basically means that uh, when you activate your ultra, there's a, a window, a brief window, where if your opponent throws an attack at you, uh, you will counter them and basically it will activate your ultra so for example I got Ryu doing a couple sweeps here so if I activate my ultra and he throws a sweep at me he's gonna get hit by my ultra that was too slow boom he threw a sweep at me during my ultra so boom he gets hit by my ultra too uh, it is an excellent excellent ultra to use uh, if your opponent is like a rushdown type character who likes to press a lot of buttons at you uh, or a vortex type of character that likes to you know try to knock you down and jump on you things like that um his ultra 2 is better used if you know that your opponent is gonna press a button okay uh, like i said the window is brief okay you're not uh in that counter state forever okay and also um Fei Long's counter is one of two counters in the game. Kami has the other counter ultra, okay? Uh, they're very, very useful, um, but they're hard to land because um, it has to be used kind of preemptively. Uh, so you have to know your opponent's gonna press the button, predict your opponent has to press a button, because once you activate it, your opponent will see you activate it and they won't touch a button. And then you're free for a big open punish. 
So another important note uh, is that you can control certain ultras, uh, their power or their distance by doing certain things. So for example, um, El Fuerte's flying Gigabuster can be controlled with the joystick, the distance. So, if I hold my joystick back, he will travel a very small distance. But if I hold my joystick forward, he will travel a very far distance. And Evil Ryu can control the power of his Metsu Hadoken or Metsatsu Hadoken uh, simply by holding it when you activate it, and it will increase the damage and power of his fireball. even get a different animation as well, but if you don't do anything, it will just give you the standard Metsatsu Hadoken. Goken here can control the speed of his Denjin Hadoken and the power of his Denjin Hadoken just by doing a couple things. So, uh, if you just do the standard Denjin Hadoken, it will come out at the standard speed and at the standard time. But if you jiggle your stick back and forth very rapidly during the Ultra, Goken's fireball will travel faster. Also, you can also hold it. And it will control the damage and when it comes out. Uh, and you can also vary it up as well. You can also, you know, what if I want to hold it, juggle it, and then do, release it at that time. It doesn't matter. Uh, so that's why... Uh, Goken's Ultra 2 is awesome because you have so much control over your Ultra. So as you can see, there's a lot of uh, different characters with all these different types of Ultras, all these unique Ultras that blend in excellently with the character style and the lore of the game. You know, like uh, a guy has, you know, his um, his offensive type Ultra and his grab type Ultra. Hakan has his, you know, grab type Ultra and then his anti-air Ultra. Uh, Relento has a offensive Ultra fireball punish. You know, it's really, really awesome. And uh, you, and like for example here, Akuma has two offensive ultras because Akuma is an extremely offensive uh, type character. But these two ultras allow him to get super big damage if he lands them. Uh, and then even like uh, Gen here has it's a very very complicated character, very complex to learn. Uh, he has four ultras. Okay, look at this. He has four ultras. Uh, so again, you have to jump into the into the training room, uh, learn what these ultra combos do, uh, learn how you can gain an advantage uh, over your opponent through these ultra combos. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll appreciate it even more if you go ahead and leave me a like down below. And also, if you have any questions because I didn't showcase your character in this episode, you can go ahead and leave those comments down in the comment section down below. Uh, now I'm starting school again, so I'm gonna have a harder time pumping out these videos really quickly, but I'll try my best to pump a video out at least once every week. Uh, but thank you again for a thousand subscribers. You guys are the best. I will see you guys on the next episode of Sir Yuking Bruh. Peace out, guys. Get up, get up, get up.